Hello guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari, and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Okay guys, not really a very upbeat video, but something that I think is important to talk about today. If you look around the country right now, you'll see that there is a new movement on the right, or at least a renewed movement on the right, and those are happening with regards to transphobic laws that impact children. Um, we see this with laws all across the country that have to do with sports, and we also see it in certain places with um, medical, medical laws that make it illegal to treat trans patients who were under the age of either 21 or 18 respective to their states. And there is a little bit of, uh, it is an odd occurrence because we see it all happening at one time and it may seem like an oddly random thing um, to be happening all at once. So strange to be a coincidence and that's because it's not a coincidence. What we're seeing is concerted efforts by right-wing organizations like the um, ADF, um, the American Family Association, the Heritage Foundation, to push these transphobic laws in their community. And it's not without purpose, beyond the obvious purpose, which is to criminalize basically trans people in one or multiple aspects. It's also about drumming up a political base. You see, if you go back and you look at it historically, and you look during the re-election bid of George W. Bush, we saw this sudden emergence of gay marriage bans, constitutional amendments coming up across states. And the reasoning for that is it was being pushed by the Republican Party, both nationally, state level, and locally. And it was doing so for a very particular reason. And that is that right-wing fundamentalist Christians are a core base of the Republican Party. And they want to inspire, they want to motivate these people to get out and vote. And part of what does that is by putting fear-mongering on the ballot, by creating an other, a boogeyman. You know, the frightening gay people that are coming for your marriage or the trans activists that want to get your kids. These are things to try to motivate their voter turnout so that they can in turn throw in more right-wing people into office, be that local, state, or federal, and in turn change even more policies, even more laws to fit their Christian version of Sharia, their religious law in America. And we also see the complication of one particular Republican figure that has come into this conversation. And that Republican figure is Caitlyn Jenner, somebody that I had no interest in really talking about on this channel because I find Caitlyn to mostly be unimportant to the conversation, unimportant to nearly any conversation. So, Caitlyn Jenner, to those of you who don't know, which I can't imagine who that is, is a trans woman, and on this channel, we will not degrade her transness. She is legitimately a trans woman. She is transitioned. She, her pronouns are what we will use, and I ask that anyone commenting do likewise. But... That doesn't mean that simply because she happens to be a trans person that she is not likewise a terrible person. And recently she proved just that by saying that she supported bans on trans students competing in women's sports. Now notice the phrase women's sports are going to come up a lot because most of these attacks are on trans women. You don't see as many laws going into effect that say trans men can't play on men's sports teams because there's also a lot of misogyny mixed into this. You see, trans women are a problem to them because trans women willingly, in their view, give up masculinity, 
which to them, masculinity is a preferred state. That is the higher state in their mind. So it's also based on a lot of misogyny, which is why they tend to target trans women in this regard rather than trans men. Now, of course, the bans on trans medical care affect both trans men, trans women, and non-binary people in a lot of ways equally. But anyway, Caitlyn Jenner has come out. She is currently running for governor as a Republican of California in this recall election that's going on. And she is desperate, as always, to make the Republicans like her. If you notice anything about Caitlyn, if you watched her show, which I did, and I don't recommend you doing it, except for the people who came on that were not Caitlyn, because there were wonderful trans activists who attempted to show her the folly of her observations to no avail. Um, but if you watch the show, you would see that Caitlyn Jenner is a Republican first. She is a trans woman and a woman second. Republicanism is much more important to her, and a lot of it has to do with her privilege because she doesn't understand the challenges of trans people who are not multimillionaires like herself. But with these laws, the types of things that this particular self-hating trans person is putting forward, the problem is in the laws themselves and how they will be enacted. Florida, for example, has recommended a type of genital inspection. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment. Anyone who their gender identity is questioned playing on a sports team, well, specifically a girls' sports team, would have to submit, we're talking children here, we're not even talking college level, which would be disgusting enough, we're talking children, would have to submit to a genital inspection. You literally have white elected men in Florida who want to look at your child's genitalia to determine whether or not they can be on the sports team, while at the same time they want to talk about trans people and equate it to pedophilia. Yet, yeah, they're the ones that want to look at naked little children. But, you have that aspect, the bodily autonomy that we're talking about intruding on. You have the issue of masculine cisgender women who will be targeted much like we saw with bathroom laws because it wasn't just the trans people, it was who people perceived as possibly trans that were impacted. You also have the subliminal message that it sends out to the communities. Because when a school district says that trans students, that trans girls can't pay, play on a girls team, they send the signal to their student body that number one, trans women or trans girls are not women and girls, which is directly in conflict with the reality of who they are. But you also send the message that it's okay to other these people to set them aside as a suspicious class, someone that we should wonder about their motivations and question their reasoning and question their very identity. And that encourages violence. That goes right into the problem of violence against trans women, especially trans women of color in our country. So there are a number of problems wrapped up with this. The biggest problem of all is that the science simply doesn't support it. The ACLU has put out some facts on trans women in sports. Uh, a number of groups have looked at the effects of trans women on women's sports. And they have found that, number one, we can only give about nine examples of trans women in sports nationally here in the U.S. None of those were successfully beating out their cisgender competitors. So the idea that trans women had this innate edge over cis women was sim is simply not true, which the science has also backed that there is no substantial 
you know, advantage. Yes, with certain trans women, there may be an advantage, just as with certain cis women, there may be a muscular advantage, there may be a financial advantage, because after all, that is the biggest advantage of all, your financial status. If you're a child in sports growing up with a wealthy family, you can afford all the coaches and all the extracurricular activities and all the available tools and training in order to be a success. If you're poor, you can't. So again, there are a number of things on that, but even though we recognize that that is an unfair advantage that wealthy families have, we don't say that if you're wealthy, you can't be involved in school sports. We don't say that if you happen to be a particularly muscular cisgender woman, you're not allowed to compete in women's or girls' sports. We look at all of these things and we understand that women are women and women's sports is a place for women to compete. And that does not exclude trans women just as men's sports do not exclude trans men. And until we get to that point, we are going to continue to see violence. This is a, an issue that may seem rather mild. It's about sports. And some of us may not care because I can tell you, I am not at all athletic. I have no interest in sports, so it's not something that's going to get my attention in that. But what it is, is it's a way to other trans women one step at a time. Because once we establish these differences and say, well, we're talking, when we talk about women's sports, we're talking about some idea of biological sex, not gender, and not gender identity, then we're able to say that when we're talking about your birth certificates, we're talking about sex as a biological factor, not your gender identity. When we talk about your IDs, we're talking about that. When we talk about employment and you can't discriminate against someone based on being a woman, then we'll say, well, no, we're talking about biological sex in that and it's perfectly fine to discriminate against someone based on their gender identity. These are all the stepping stones that they are working towards. And if you for one moment think that the, you know, ADF, that the uh, uh, Heritage Foundation, that the American Family Association are looking at these based solely on women's sports or even solely on medical access, you are going to be painfully wrong in that. It is one step moving towards other goals. It all has to do, we look at gay marriage, and the moment that gay marriage was overturned, we looked at several things, or the, the ban on gay marriage was overturned. We saw several things from jury, a type of, uh, you might say, court nullification, with state Supreme Courts thinking that they could overrule the Supreme Court, which you can't, um, from immediately going to trans issues because they felt they had lost the battle on gay issues, but here's another community that we can hate on. So the point is, number one, is that we have to be politically involved. We have to know what's going on. Being an apolitical trans person makes no sense because ultimately politics will impact your life. Politics is governance. Governance impacts every single one of us. And these types of things, while it may be about sports right now, and it may be about underage people with medical services, and we may not necessarily be impacted by that directly at this stage because we're not athletic and in sports and we're not underage, but do not make the mistake of thinking that it will not roll up or down or however you want to look at it to us. It will. We have options with the Equality Act. We have to push for that. But is that going to happen right now? No, it's not. Because until we vote on this state level and make sure that we are getting inclusive legislators in Washington, D.C., every plan that we have for a more inclusive, a more equitable society is going to fail. We have to get boots on the ground when it comes to election days. We have to look at these elections for senators and House of Representatives, both on the state, because that's where most of these laws are taking place right now, 
and on the federal level because that's where we could stop these laws dead in their tracks with the Equality Act. And until we do that, and as long as we put party over the substance and put people in like Joe Manchin or Kristen Seneca who are not going to support us but they have a D behind their name so we go ahead and vote for them anyway, we are going to continue to have these problems. Please be active. Please look at elections. Look at what is going on in your local community with these transphobic laws and act. Stand up. Speak out. Use your voice because as adults, those of you who may be watching, most of us have more of an opportunity to use our voices for change than those children who were once as we, are, as we were. They're in the school system. They need someone who is going to stand up for them. And that needs to be every trans person, every trans ally in this country. Because we have a lot to work to do. A lot of work to do. We won an election. Fantastic. That was the start of what we have to do. That was most certainly not the finish. Thank you for listening today. Um, despite the fact that it was not an upbeat message, um, I, I hope that you enjoyed the video in some way. My quote from Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down. Don't let the people who are trying to shove these laws through our states and through our federal governments get us down. We have to continue to fight. We were successful on one thing with this last election. It proves that if we come together, we can be successful on much, much more. Hopefully you'll stick, hopefully you'll come back for the next video. I don't know when that's going to be because I'm not very good at being regular with these. But anyway, give it a thumbs up, a like, whatever you do on, on YouTube. I've kind of forgotten anymore, but leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on what you want to see for other videos, what you thought of this topic. And I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye-bye and lots of love.